we have enough. Yeah, we have enough people. So we'll call the meeting to order. And I'll ask Stephanie to take the roll. Yep, Marta Larson. Present, uh, contacting from uh, Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present, calling from Milan, Michigan. Bonnie Weber. Present, calling from Lizard Lake, Michigan. Elizabeth Thompson. Present, calling from Ypsilanti Township, Michigan. And Ellen has been excused. Uh, I don't see Steve, we'll wait for him. Uh, Bennett Stark. Um, yeah, Bennett Stark reporting from Ann Arbor, District 9, I believe. Okay. Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Perfect. And Jason Masajewski. Present, attending remotely from Dexter Township, Washington, All County, Michigan. Perfect. And you have a quorum. And do we have any other excused absences? Just uh, Ellen. Okay, thank you. Yep. So at this time, uh, it's a uh, point on the agenda for public participation. So if there's any member of the public that wishes to um, make a comment, this is the time. Raise your hand and I'll call on you. I do not see any hands raised. So it looks like we're past that point on the agenda and we won't have any need for commission response to public participation since there was none. So we'll move on to report from the Board of Commissioners and that would be Jason. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. There, good morning. There hasn't been a County Board of Commissioners meeting since the last meeting of this body, um, but I will update you on uh, the senior millage situation. And you may remember that uh, a senior millage or any millage would require two readings of before the county commission to be placed on the ballot. Uh, for November, those readings would have to occur in one in July and one in August. Uh, I, uh, over the past couple of weeks, have been talking with some of my colleagues uh, and have determined the votes are not there to place a millage on the ballot in 2022. Uh, in discussing the issue with uh, some of my colleagues, we've come up with a, uh, a compromise uh, that would be um, the approval of a resolution by the county commission uh, to instruct the county administrator to uh, develop a plan for a county millage um, uh, approval. So uh, a plan in terms of uh, potentially how uh, a, you know, an aging services senior millage supported um, effort might exist within the county administration. Uh, you know, what the potential services and programs that would be supported by the millage would be. Um, in essence, uh, a proposal uh, for the usage of potential millage funds for the county commission to consider. Um, this has been a, a lot of the feedback I've gotten from my colleagues is, is they would like to see this type of plan uh, before a millage would be placed on the ballot for consideration by the voters. Uh, so, uh, this plan uh, appears to have a significant majority of the county commissioners on board. Uh, one caveat to it is that it, the report would come back to the county commission from the county administrator uh, so that the county commission could consider placement of a half mill on, the, on a ballot in the year 2023. Uh, so... Um, I, 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 right now I'm anticipating that this resolution will appear on our agenda next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, and again, the only thing it requires the county administrator to come up with a plan and report that plan back. Um, uh, it does not require the county commission to vote on placing a millage on the ballot, and it does not specify a time frame, but just that the report 
be given back in time for the county commission to consider a ballot measure in 2023. So um, that's probably been the biggest thing that's happened over the last two weeks. Um, we continue to move forward with our ARPA discussions, which I remain confident that um, there will be a uh, kind of a, a older adults um, fund that will make it through ARPA 3.0. Uh, I remain confident that, that will be there as well and be able to address um, older adult issues over the next two fiscal years. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can I just ask, is it possible for the county administrator to also be instructed to sort out what is currently being provided by the county for seniors um, and look within all the departments to come up with some sort of information about that? Uh, yeah, the, the way that this is anticipated to work is that there will be an inventory taken of what currently exists, information that has been provided by this body uh, will be uh, taken into account as well. Uh, and um, that plan kind of developed um, through further discussion with various stakeholders of which I will be involved uh, as well. And I would assume that this body would be um, you know, engaged in that process too. Excellent, thank you. Um, yep. Let the record note that Stephen has joined the meeting. Stephen, would you announce where you're calling in from? Um, yes, Ann Arbor Township, thank you. Sorry, I'm late. I have hands up from Elizabeth and then Bonnie. So Elizabeth. I just like to say, Jason, thank you for um, helping craft a compromise like that. Um, certainly in our subcommittee about a potential millage, um, we heard from other counties that that's one of the big challenges if it's a new millage is being ready to, when the millage dollars are collected, um, be able to, um, in a timely manner, start getting them out um, to the community and also, um, I know from a personal level that some of the issues around previous human services millages and so on were precisely because people felt, we don't know how it's gonna happen, et cetera, et cetera. It sounds like that your compromise is um, a great way of moving the issue forward and so I'd like to thank you for spending all that time on, on negotiating and getting us a step further along the path. I have to, yeah, thanks for, for saying that. And it, sometimes this process can be kind of vague and, uh, and uh, you know, it appears that things are slow moving, but uh, really uh, there's just a lot of discussions and a lot of opinions that come into something like this. And I will say that the idea of a broader human services um, effort or investment by the county has been brought up. When, when I bring this issue up, others bring that issue up. Um, so I would not be surprised if there are some discussions um, that are even broader than just a senior millage. I wouldn't be surprised at that, but I, I remain focused on the issue of older adults and, and furthering support for the, for the things that exist, whether they're, they're provided by the AAA or uh, other entities um, for older adults. So we'll see where this path takes us, but I am, uh, I am uh, encouraged by the willingness of my colleagues to, to come up with a plan and look at data and get input. Um, I think that, um, you know, if we get to the point of getting something on the ballot and it gets approved, I think we'll be well prepared at the very beginning to begin implementing. So um, th thank you for the comment. Okay, I have Bonnie and then Margaret. So Bonnie? Yeah, I'd like to thank Jason too for continuing to carry this torch for us. I know it's a, sometimes it's a uphill battle and, and we feel like it's an uphill battle sometimes, but things are looking, you know, they're starting to look very positive for us. You briefly mentioned that maybe the commission on aging, you know, he might, they might work with us. I, if, if you get an opportunity, I think, we probably would be very willing to have someone from the Commission on Aging participate if they're going to have some type of a focus group or some type of a committee to work on this. Um, I'm sure that someone from the Commission on Aging would volunteer their time 
to be our representative to, you know, to participate in that. And um, I just wanted to put that in there. I'm, I'm sure that, um, you know, just rather than just maybe reaching out to us, we would really like to be rather active and help in any way that we can. Yeah, Bonnie, I, I would say that a, a planning process um, that kind of develops a roadmap here would not be complete without input from this body. So to me, that that's a requirement. Thank you. Okay, Margaret, and then I have Stephen after her. Oh, um, that was um, sort of my question, but uh, maybe a little more in depth about how have have they done this before? I, you say the county administrator will be charged with this task, and I guess I'm just wondering how that happens. Um, who would who would be involved with the county administrator to do this? Um, I would envision that it would include the county commission's staff person, Peter Lindeman. Uh, I would envision that it would include members of county administration, although I don't necessarily want to put names out there because we haven't had that discussion. I would think it would include people that work on senior issues in the county currently, including staff from the Office of Community and Economic Development. Um, I would think it would include, again, at least a representative from this body, if not uh, more. Uh, I, I would envision that, and I, 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 you know, again, I think I'm going to be involved in that process as well. Uh, so I think there's some research that will be done. Uh, you, this, this group has, you know, looked at other counties um, as well. And you look at some of the, you know, the counties that have had success success with this Kent County or um, you know other counties as well and I, I yeah I would be um, I think it would be a good idea if we looked at other counties around the country who have done things successfully with a senior millage um, and, and learn from them as well I would envision this being not not a necessarily a quick process um, but uh, I think it, there, there's a there's an amount of of research and information to gather as well uh, on it. So those are um, some of the people I would think would be involved, but we haven't had, I really have been trying to get support just to get the resolution passed at this point and that we haven't yeah. really talked about names. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure that's taken a good deal of time and thank you. Um, the, the, the idea is to have it completed so that we could consider um, a millage um, for the 2023, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think it, yeah, I think an important thing to note there as well is that on January 1st, there will be a new county commission. Um, so there is, uh, with it, when that will have at least two new members on it, two of the nine would be brand new. Um, so this county commission cannot bind another county commission towards any kind of action. So uh, simply the report um, being issued to that body um, would then give them the, the trigger to either be yes or no. And that's something I've talked about with, with some people is the idea of let's end this cycle of, you know, every year it's like, well, next year, next time, we'll think about this at a future date. I really wanted to make this say, let's, let's get the information together. Let's come up with a plan to make a decision so that was the impetus be behind me, including 2023. Once people agreed to that here, getting that written into the resolution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Yeah. Hi. Um, three quickies. So um, one is in regards to the, um, Bonnie, what you mentioned. Just wanted to make note. I would absolutely love to volunteer if this group wind up needing somebody from our. Uh, Commission on Aging. So just something to mention that. Um, second, in regards to um, sort of someone to look at other counties in the country that have been successful, I, I do want to mention that there is somebody that I've had contact with um, who was the health commissioner for both Wisconsin and New York, who now has a sort of consulting group that does exactly that kind of work. So I just wanted to mention if you wind up forming it and you are open to an outside person, 
I would definitely recommend you interview, um, his name is Jason Helgerson, H-E-L-G-E-R-S-O-N. But I've been very, very impressed with, with that group um, and, and their knowledge um, you know, on it. So anyway, um, the last thing, this is unrelated um, it, because I don't see any other hands um, on it. You mentioned about the area agency on aging being involved. And there's a question, Jason, since I know your other role, is, are, is Ann Arbor have enough older adults where one of the things the Commission on Aging should think about is whether or not it's time for the federal government, state government to have an area agency on aging that supports Washtenaw County as opposed to right now where it's split up among many counties? Oh, that's a... That's a landmine. Uh, <laughs> so that designation is made by the state of Michigan. Right. Uh, and the way it works is uh, uh, that uh, when it, AAAs were created back in the 1970s, uh, counties were given the right of first refusal to establish their own area agency on aging. And the way that things resulted in, in counties kind of um, considering that and walking away from it was that they were, they were really became regional bodies. That's how you got AAA 1B. Um, they are the largest in the state. And I think at one point, I don't know about the 2020 census numbers, but I know at one point, AAA 1B represented almost two out of every five older adults in the state of Michigan. They are a very large organization. Um, I, however, I do, do not think that having its own area agency on aging is might not might be the might not be the best thing for for Washtenaw County um I I think that what what the thought that I've been interested in exploring is the idea of having the county have its own office on aging um there are other counties that have that um, and that could work in in a much more formalized manner with AAA 1B in, in partnership rather than what we have right now, which is a couple of staff people at Office of Community and Economic Development kind of working with them. But um, I, I what, don't what, what, was the reason, what was the reason that you thought that we shouldn't have our own AAA? Like, why do you think that's at a, a disadvantage? By the way, I do know that there's two attendees that are from one piece. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I think in the long run, I think it's just one is why you don't think so, and two is how would you go about it if the Commission on Aging explored it and decided that it was a good decision? Um, I think there are advantages in terms of funding and in terms of networking and collaboration with being with a regional AAA. Um, it's some, it's, it, it may be one of the things I struggle with it at my agency because we're part of one county uh, in my agency. Um, I think there's, there's definitely some synergies there um, just, just the process itself is unchartered uh, in my tenure. Uh, I've been within the AAA network for 13 years. It's never happened uh, in my time. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't know how it would happen. And I, I believe it would have to be the state um, making that, that change. And if anything, I would say that the, the trend in AAA world is not to create more AAAs, but to actually have fewer AAAs. Um, so I think in Iowa or Pennsylvania, they've reduced the number of AAAs. There's one of the states in the Midwest that's done that recently. Um, so actually the, the trend is to actually go more regional rather than, than smaller. So would you, I think it would last, be an incredibly last... hard road to go down. Yeah, I, you just convinced me. Um, last question I have, and this might be also for Marta and um, you know, and and the leadership here is, you know, we have Deanna sit on the panel because she is part of um, you know a group that we you know are collaborating with. But would it make sense for there to be a representative air agency on aging one B? I mean, it might be a good choice for a future commissioner. But does it make sense for somebody representing them to be at least a panelist? Um, I, I kind of like the role that AAA One B has as kind of a stakeholder and not a voting member of the Commission on Aging. Um, they they bring their expertise and their knowledge 
um, kind of as in an advisory role or as a facilitating role. Um, and I, I, I personally think that's probably the best way to do it. Well, Deanna doesn't have a voting role, right? She just, she's one of, one of the panelists, but what do you think about having somebody representing them just as a panelist so that if they do hear something, they'd be able to answer questions, whether it's a funding question or some other thing related. So maybe I'm a little unsure what you mean by panelist. Meaning that you don't have voting rights, right? Deanna, I don't think, right, has voting rights. She's just sitting in, but she has a question as she does now, she asks it, you know? And if, she, if we have a question about her work in her group, we ask it. And because we're so tied together, it gives us access and her access to us in a way that's different than really any other group. And I'm just thinking, wouldn't that make sense for 1B as well? Um, I, 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 I would want to think about that. I'm, I'm not sure about it. And I don't, and I don't know if, how 1B would feel about it, quite frankly. Um, I'd also I, like I, to add that Stephanie, the um, person who's supporting this, this group and taking notes and, and present is from AAA 1B. Um, right. We've contracted with AAA 1B to support this body. In not that in that way. role, but not a, right in this. Not in this way is what area. we've established thus far. Mm -hmm. Right, not in not in the representing Triple One B, you know, like a leadership. It's mm -hmm. right. That's not her role. So, I, right. I would and say, as as a county yeah. commissioner, yeah, as a county commissioner, I would say that my expectation might be too strong of a word, but I'll use it. My expectation would be that an area agency on aging should probably be be present and engaged in a commission on aging wherever it is uh, at the county level. So um, wh whether, we, whether or not we, this body contracts or the county contracts with AAA 1B to provide support to this body, I would, I would hope that 1B would be available to, to play that kind of role you're talking about, regardless of if it, they're providing the staff support. Thank you. Okay. I think it should be noted that among our attendees are two members from AAA 1B um, in the audience. And I feel confident that if any of them uh, had any information uh, that they would like to offer to the commission, that they would be in touch with us uh, outside the meeting and let us know. And we could um, ask them to participate more fully at that point, um, not necessarily as a member of the audience, but at a future meeting. Um, I see that Margaret and then Dina have their hands raised. So Margaret. So um, in 2023, uh, uh, there, uh, there are no um, ballot measures, um, uh, no slated elections for that uh, period of time. So who would pay for this um, ballot measure on, on aging? In the event that there are no other measures on the ballot, in, in the involved municipalities in our county. Um, the county has a history. If the only measure on, a, on the ballot is a countywide measure, the county has a history of reimbursing municipalities for the cost of running that election. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, Dina. I just wanted to um, add um, something for what Steven said. Uh, so on the Healthy Aging Collaborative, we have a member from AAA1B. So, um, and that's um, Amanda Sears, who also serves on our leadership group. And, um, and the Commission on Aging has been, you know, invited, it's kind of an open invitation to, to be part of our leadership meetings. So at any time that there would be a benefit to um, talking about some, some joint um, efforts, you know, that AAA1B might be involved with, there's already a place for that, I think. And, and Deanna, I know I always use some dates for a meeting. I apologize for not getting back to you. I know I gotta get you those dates. Thanks, Jason, I appreciate yep. it. Okay, so um, is there anyone left that wants to address uh, Jason during his report from the Board of Commissioners or are we good? 
uh, the, the, the two people from area agency on 1B both have their hand up, including Amanda Sears. I don't, I see that Amanda Sears has her hand up. Um, yeah. We don't usually call on audience members, but I will make an exception in, in this occasion and uh, we'll try to keep it brief because we need to move the agenda along. So Amanda. Hi, I'll be brief. Thanks for letting me speak. I just wanted to agree with what everyone said and let you know that um, either there's almost always um, one of us from AAA1B um, in addition to Stephanie on these meetings in the audience. So if you ever feel the need to want to call on us for questions or comments, we're here, but we're happy to stay in the audience and be called upon when needed. So thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, okay, uh, we can, um, Stephanie, you can move Amanda back to the audience. I'm not sure how to do that. Yeah, I can do it. I got you. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda, for, for saying that. And we will definitely um, take advantage of that offer. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Um, so I'll ask uh, Stephanie to call the roll. Yep, Marta Larson. Oh, I guess we probably should have a motion. Do we have to have a oh, motion? Oh, yeah. Who else I'll make that motion. Okay, Marie makes the motion and right. Margaret supports. And now we'll call the roll. Sorry about that. There we go. It's early. <laughs> Marta early. Larson. Yes. Marie Grass. Yes. Bonnie Weber. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Steve Stein. Yes. Bennett Stark. Yes. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. And Jason Masicheski. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Um, next is subcommittee updates. And the first one is communications. So that would be Marie. Yeah, I have uh, no updates except to apologize. I was supposed to get a, a template out to you all for inviting uh, speakers to this body. Uh, and I did not do that before this meeting. I'll make sure to make sure that happens before the next. Excellent. Uh, needs assessment, which is also Marie. And we have no updates. ARPA? No updates. Okay. Potential millage, Elizabeth. Um, as you know, that we're... Um, have scheduled to have... Um, Allison Foreman, who's the uh, uh, head of the, I guess, or convener of the uh, Say Yes to Seniors Coalition or chair, um, presenting at our next meeting. And I, we'd asked commission members to send in questions. Um, so just very briefly, these, Today was the deadline for getting questions, which I have sent, just sent to Allison. Um, and I'll just go over them really quickly. Very briefly, could you tell us who the members organizations are, the services they provide and how many people are served, just to let us know how broad-based the coalition is. Two, what are the types of programs or services the coalition would most like to see developed? Were the millage to pass? Are these services a priority? Third, um, they have suggested uh, 0.5 mils out and I asked them, uh, do you have a approximate figure of how much funding this would raise? And then question four, if possible, could you give us a sense of what the additional funding would do for example, the X dollars raised would let us serve 100 more people in Meals on Wheels, hire four additional case managers at JFS, or whatever. Those examples are totally out of my head. They're not based on anything, but just to give them a sense that if they can give us a notion of what a millage would look like when implemented, and then the last, which um, very much relates to what Jason has told us the county commissioners are looking at, what are their suggestions for how the county might administer or implement a millage? 
Thank you. Uh, okay, so the next item on our agenda is a presentation by the Housing Bureau for Seniors. And we have Yvonne Cudney with us who is um, prepared to make that presentation. So I think we'll turn it over to Yvonne. And do you want to share your screen? Is that, do you have a presentation? Okay, so uh, let me just start with this. One, I have a big dog who's playing with the squeaky top toy. Two, outside my room. And two, I might have a cat that starts meowing. And three, I get really nervous with technology. Okay, so let me see if I've got this right. What do you all see? We see your presentation. Your presentation. Yeah, okay, great. Now I just have to find my notes. Do you want, uh, Yvonne, questions as you go along or do you want people to save them until the end? It turns out my presentation is pretty long. So I would prefer questions at the end. And I am not seeing my notes. Yvonne, you're sharing right now with, um, have you started from the, oh, there we I go. I stopped the share because I'm nervous. You're good. Um, if you, so it looks different than when we were practicing. Right, okay. So maybe you didn't select the right thing. screen. Let me try this one. And you got this, Yvonne. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Yvonne, I always do this wrong the first time too. So you, what you have to do is start, you have to start presenting before you share. Your oh, screen. okay, hold on then. Oh my gosh. Can you believe that three years ago, none of us even knew about Zoom? <sighs> okay, where's my thing to stop sharing? The other You're thing, not sharing currently. The other okay. thing she can okay. do. Yep. Slideshow is... from beginning. What do you see now? You have to share your screen now. Lovely. Yeah. The other thing she could do is email Stephanie you maybe. Oh, we got it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No email. I sent I it to Stephanie. I do have it as a backup. Okay, so you're still seeing it, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay, you got you it. guys, you thank you so much for your patience. Uh, so there are a few things that I always have to do. Uh, the title slide for Michigan Medicine Presentations. This is the senior housing landscape of Washtenaw County. Um, here's our agenda. Uh, my name is Yvonne Cudney. I am the Community Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Housing Bureau for Seniors. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about me, qualify myself to speak, uh, I am an attorney. I practiced in legal services representing low-income people for about 18 to 20 years in both California and Michigan. Uh, for two and a half years following that, I worked for the Office of Community and Economic Development in their home improvement program, so weatherization and rehab. And I now work for the Housing Bureau for Seniors um, as their Community Education and Outreach Coordinator. My passion is housing. My passion is affordable housing, truly affordable housing, um, and representing or advocating for low income populations. Uh, this presentation is going to cover a little bit about Housing Bureau for Seniors because I'd be remiss if I didn't since I work for them. Um, I'm going to provide an overview of the housing landscape in Washtenaw County. I'm going to talk about income for older adults uh, to the best of my ability. I'm going to do a deeper dive into the rental and homeowner markets for older adults. Uh, it paints a rather grim picture. So I'm gonna talk about some steps for moving forward, possible avenues and best practices. And then we'll wrap this presentation up and I will take questions then if you don't mind. So first, the Housing Bureau for Seniors is a program of community health services, which is a department within Michigan Medicine. Uh, community health services is community anchored and community led and it has five different initiatives um, to address community need. Both the Housing Bureau for Seniors and Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels address the initiative for protecting the health and quality of life for our seniors. 
The Housing Bureau for Seniors is a free service to older adults in Washtenaw County and beyond and their care providers. We define older adults as those who are 55 and over. Uh, we have some core programming, which includes eviction prevention, housing counseling, foreclosure prevention, and education. We have two annual events, our big fundraisers. One is Senior Living Week, which is scheduled for October 15th through the 22nd. So um, save the day. Two, the other big annual event is our Big Hearts for Seniors, uh, which has been storytelling for the past couple of years, and we held that in May. For all of our programs, we have social workers who conduct assessments that encompass financial stability, physical and mental health, and housing sustainability. In eviction prevention, our social worker often negotiates with landlords, actively assists tenants with finding new housing, and often assists them with moving. In our foreclosure program, we work closely with the Washtenaw County Treasurer's Office to prevent tax foreclosures. We assist homeowners with applying for homestead credits, tax deferments, and tax reductions, all of which put more money into um, homeowners' pockets so they can pay for their expenses. And then finally, we can assist with applying for uh, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund, which was developed to um, in response to COVID. And my cat just made its presence aware. So hold on one second, please. <laughs> you don't even get to see the cat. You're just going to dump it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am. He gets really loud. Um, so sorry about that. We also offer housing counseling, which is um, support to assess living arrangements and help older adults and their care providers explore long-term care options for next moves. Finally, we maintain a listing of all senior housing communities in Washtenaw County, which includes all age, all age section eight and market rate properties, as well as subsidized developments. Uh, I'm in charge of the education department, if you will. Uh, I educate the public on the senior housing landscape, affordable housing in general. I also offer workshops in extending independence in the home, um, decision-making tools to find the right fit for moving into your neck, into assisted living or some other form of uh, assisted living and preventing property tax or mortgage foreclosure. There are a few takeaways uh, that I'd like you to get from this presentation. And I read your response to the board of commissioners um, questions on your presentation recently. So I think you've got some of this already, but I'm just going to reiterate it. Uh, Washtenaw County has about 371,000 older uh, residents, not older adult residents, about 20% or 72,000 of them are older adults. It's about 20% of the population. The senior population is expected to grow in Washtenaw County by 40% by 2045. Currently, we have about 30,000 senior households in Washtenaw County. 31% of them are housing cost burdened, which I'll talk about in a minute. 28% of them have income below the household survival budget as developed by United for Alice. What that really means is about 30% of older adult households are economically challenged or having a hard time making ends meet. Washtenaw County currently has um, 1,600 housing units, affordable or subsidized housing units, which is insufficient for our current needs. We can only house about two in 10 of those older adult households that are economically challenged. Um, there is hope. Washtenaw County has some current infrastructure that could support um, modified or expanded programs. And there's some best practices from elsewhere that we could borrow and for which we have some infrastructure in place already. Let me just take a look at my notes and make sure I've covered everything I have. Every presentation that the Housing Bureau for Seniors does starts with this housing iceberg. Um, the tip of the iceberg is literal homelessness. This is what the public sees generally. It's those people who are living on shelters or on the streets. In 2020, approximately 19% of shelter clients were over the age of 55 in Washtenaw County. Wow. If you, the Housing Bureau generally deals with what's below the water, and it starts at the very tip or the very bottom, if you will, with unaffordable housing. 
31% of older adult households in this county are housing cost burdened, meaning they spend over 30% of their income on housing expenses. Uh, many of the people, the majority of the people that the Housing Bureau for Seniors sees spend over 50 and up to all of their income on rent. If unaffordable housing isn't addressed, it leads to unstable housing. For renters, this could mean evictions, and for homeowners, it means foreclosures. Um, eviction rates averaged 11.3% in 2018 in Washtenaw County. That means for every one eviction file, or there's one eviction filed for every nine rental housing units in the county. So that's not specific to older adults, okay? But it's generally across the board. 18% of the 65 and over households are renters. So presumably some of those eviction rates, possibly even 11.3% of them apply to those older adults, uh, but it hasn't been broken down to that level. For homeowners, we're noticing, I've been um, following the Washington County Legal News and advert, um, notices for mortgage foreclosure. And what we're finding is that approximately 42% of the households post COVID moratorium are um, over the age of 55 and they're experiencing mortgage foreclosures. Uh, if unstable housing is not addressed, it could lead to hidden homelessness and potentially literal homelessness. So this is a rough estimate. I know that you guys have been asked about this. I spoke with the Office of Community and Economic Development and um, they extrapolated some the percentage from Detroit from the Detroit area census, and it showed that approximately 2.3 percent of households were either doubling up or experiencing hidden homelessness, meaning that they were living with friends or relatives. So, if we applied that 2.3 percent to the Washtenaw County area, it would mean that approximately 3,700 households are um, it's experiencing hidden homelessness in Washtenaw County. Again, rough estimate, they couldn't get any more granular than that. And um, that isn't a number for older adults. Again, it's across the board, all ages. This is a screen where I wanna talk about income for older adults. Uh, we're all aware of a federal poverty limit for a single person in 2019, that limit was $12,880. That could be 2021, um, but it was $12,880. The problem with that standard is that it really undercounts the number of households that are truly economically challenged. Um, that threshold is actually a little bit higher. And so a number of different standards have been developed by different agencies to address that um, shortfall. Uh, one of those is the area median income, which HUD uses, and then there's also this ALICE threshold that was developed um, with United Way or United for ALICE. It's intended to comprehensively measure the number of households that struggle in each county of the U.S. So the budget that I have posted here is specifically for Washtenaw County. Um, and before I dig down into that, I just want to give you a little bit more information about what we know about income for older adults here. 90% of seniors in Washtenaw County, 65 and over, are drawing Social Security. The main income for Social Security for that uh, age cohort is $24,000 or $2,000 a month. Approximately 57% of those 65 and over are drawing retirement. That's, um, that mean is 30,750. So it means 42% oh, aren't receiving retirement. Um, private retirement and could potentially just be living from their social security. 79% uh, of the older adults in Washington County, meaning 65 and over, are not employed. So it's really important that we understand they're either drawing retirement or um, social security. So back to this Alice budget a little bit. This household survival budget is the bare minimum cost. Um, there's the bare minimum cost of a household, um, which is necessary to live and work here in Washtenaw County. Uh, I like this because it really breaks down the budget and shows you uh, 
the bare minimum, right? It's not a lot of money. So let me break it down a little bit because I know that you guys were interested in this. The housing cost of $900 for a single adult is based on HUD's area median income for somebody whose income is below 50% of the area median income. The food budget, obviously there's no childcare because we're talking about a single adult. The food budget is $294. This was designed, this is um, the lowest level of the thrifty food plan, which was designed by the USDA to meet nutritional requirements for a healthy diet. And again, $294 is from 2019. The cost of food has gone up exponentially since then. Transportation is calculated using an average annual expenditure for both uh, transportation by car and by public transportation. Healthcare is the average spending for both health insurance premiums and out-of-pocket out of costs. The technology is the average cost of a smartphone plan. It doesn't include the smartphone, it doesn't include the internet, and it doesn't include a laptop computer, just the smartphone plan. Taxes are federal and state taxes because it is this household survival budget assumes that somebody is working, um, uh, which 79% of older adults or 65 and over are not in Washtenaw County. And then there's a 10% um, miscellaneous expense, which is just, it's the uh, emergency pot in case something happens. And we all know from life that something always happens. The second chart over here, you guys can see my mouse, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, so this far right column shows that approximately 7% of the older adults, 65 and over in Washtenaw County are living below the federal poverty limit. An additional 21% are living below the Alice threshold um, survival budget, which is $30,000. And to give you an idea, this $30,000 is approximately 40% of the area median income. So those are the, the standards, the alternative uh, poverty levels um, established by HUD, okay? And that's important for the next slide or the next two slides the rental market in Washtenaw County. There are approximately 5,413 older adult renters in Washtenaw County. 53% of them are housing cost burdened. It means about 2,900 households. There are two types of rentals pretty generally. There's market rate rentals and there's subsidized or affordable um, rentals. Those are regulated by uh, subsidies to provide below market rental rates. The types of subsidies are development subsidies and those um, become or often labeled affordable housing. And then there's also rent subsidies which are determined or established by HUD. Um, they result in vouchers which can either be project-based or housing choice vouchers. They're two different things. And I can address housing choice vouchers separately if anybody ever wants to talk to me about it. We're just gonna talk about the project-based vouchers. We have approximately 1,600 um, affordable or subsidized units in Washtenaw County, which means that we have mm, approximately two units of affordable or subsidized housing um, possibilities for every 10 household, adult households that are housing cost burdened or having a hard time making ends meet economically. All right, this slide, really breaks it down for us. We have the total number of affordable or subsidized units in Washtenaw County at 1,639. I've listed all of the units and where they're located. I've also listed in this column, the number of units for each different development, whether or not they have a project-based voucher associated with them, that's the green check mark. Courthouse Square and Lurie Terrace have 30 project-based vouchers associated with them for a variety of reasons. Um, and then also because all of these have a development subsidy associated with them, I've listed the area median income associated with that. The chart to the right are the HUD income limits um, for the area median incomes, and then the rent limits associated with those area median incomes. Uh, the bottom chart is the federal poverty limit for 2021. That's what I was talking about before. And I, 
I'm, I'm using this screen because I really want you all to understand what it means to live in poverty and how affordable housing is really not affordable for anyone living in poverty. Um, so I'm gonna do this. I'm going to pretend like I am somebody who's living in poverty. My annual income is $12,880 or I have a monthly income of 1,073. If I wanted to live in affordable housing, Cranbrook Tower, for example, I would have to have income at or below 60% of the area median income. So the area median income is $74,600. 60% of the area median income is $44,000, $45,000. I would qualify for this housing because my monthly income is $12,880 or 13,000, right? But the maximum rent associated with the slow income housing is $1,120. My income is only 1,073. So the maximum rent is $50 more than my total monthly income. I would not be able to afford to live in Cranbrook Tower absent the project-based voucher that um, is associated with it. And when there's a project-based voucher or a housing choice voucher, your rent automatically becomes one third of your gross monthly income. My point is this, affordable housing will never be affordable for a person living in poverty unless they have some type of rental subsidy. So when we think about building affordable housing, we need to think about targeting it towards people who are at or below 30% AMI or somehow obtaining a voucher um, to help subsidize the unit. Deeper dive into homeowners, about 24,000 uh, 24, older adult homeowners in Washington County, 26 and a half percent of them are housing cost burdened. Um, the median housing cost for somebody with a mortgage for an older adult with a mortgage is $1,547. Without a mortgage, it's $670. Now I know historically we've always thought, you know, the public sentiment or thought process is older adults don't have mortgages. But uh, the Harvard Joint Council on Housing has found that the share of homeowners aged 65 and over with housing debt doubled from 1989 to 2019 from 21 to 42%. That means a lot more of our older adults actually have mortgages that they're paying down right now. Um, we've estimated by reviewing the Washington County Legal News and check, using some apps that approximately 42% of the households in Washington County are experiencing mortgage foreclosure are over the age of 55. Many, many older adults in Washington County have stated that they like to, they would like to downsize, but cite the lack of affordable senior housing friendly options as a barrier to moving in Washington County. So, so far in this presentation, I've talked primarily about, I've talked about the senior housing landscape in Washington County and how dire it is. My next slide is going to move us into um, thinking about potential avenues for moving forward. Uh, we may, I'm betting most of us have heard about aging in place. The Center for Dis Disease Control and Prevention call, um, have defined it as the ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently, and comfortably, regardless of age, income, or ability level. Um, Washington County seniors, when recently polled about what they need to successfully age in place, 30% uh, of the seniors identified needing assistance with home modifications and repairs, and 28% identified needing assistance with chore supports. These two needs were second and third to uh, needing home delivered meals. So they're up in the top three. Washtenaw County has some programs in place already that could address some of these needs, but they're limited. Uh, so Washtenaw County's weatherization program administered by OCED provides air sealing and insulation and furnace replacements for both renters and homeowners alike. 
Uh, you have to be 200% of the federal poverty limit. It's about $26,000 20, $26, right now, or under, there's some new ARPA guidelines, I believe that um, target people below 60% of the AMI. There's also a home rehab program administered by OCED. It provides ramps and roofs, furnaces and hot water heaters. There's a wait list for ramps and roofs. It's anywhere from six months to two years. The targets uh, households below 80% AMI. Catholic Social Services has a program to help out with minor handy person work, lawn care and snow removal. There are no income guidelines for it. There is a suggested cost share. And of course, there's a wait list. Washtenaw County has had several pilot programs. Um, OCED had a, oh, I skipped one. YMAO had a capable program. I'll talk a little bit more about that um, on the next slide. It's a best practice. Uh, OCED had a plumbing repair program in winter 2020 in response to COVID. Ann Arbor has an Ann Arbor Aging in Place Efficiently program that from 2021 to 2022, it was only for the city of Ann Arbor. It was a collaboration between a bunch of stakeholders. There are some ways that we could move forward um, and some best practices. If there were a millage, we could create a senior affordable housing trust fund. There's some precedents for this. It's similar to the Ann Arbor Affordable Housing Trust Fund. It could be used to leverage other funding sources for the building or rehab of affordable housing for seniors countywide. The Ann Arbor Housing Trust Fund targets um, households below 50% AMI and it gives priority to households whose income is below 30% AMI. And there is a um, document that spells out how, it's, how it works, which I've got attached to my notes. There's also shared housing this is, um, it enables two or more unrelated people to share housing for their mutual benefit. A person offers a private bedroom and shared common area in exchange for rent, help around the house, or a combination of the two. There's a national clearing house uh, that could provide some guidance on how to do this. There are aging in place programs that I mentioned before, the community aging in place, advancing better li living for elders or capable programs was developed by the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. It's a four to five month program that integrates the services of an occupational therapist, a registered nurse, and a handy worker who work together with older adults to set goals and direct action plans that change behaviors to improve health, independence, and safety in the household. YMAO's program incorporated a social worker. And of course, what's really um, interesting to me is the home modifications. Um, which are really helpful and have lasting effects for seniors. There's the Ann Arbor Aging in Place Efficiently program um, that is winding down this year. They haven't quite figured out how to expand it into the rest of the county. Um, all of these programs or the pilot programs that I mentioned before were established because uh, community agencies managed to find funding um, for one-time pilot projects. They haven't been picked up to provide sustainable housing yet. So again, the takeaways, there are 30,000 senior households in Washtenaw County right now. Approximately a third of them are having a hard time making ends meet. We, we have insufficient affordable or subsidized housing. Um, we can only house two in 10 older adult households who are having a hard time making ends meet. There is hope, there are best practices from elsewhere, and we've got some infrastructure that could be modified or expanded to continue to assist older adults age in place in Washtenaw County. Uh, now it's time for questions, if you guys have any questions. I have one and then I'll call on people who have their hands up. Um, at one point, there was an office at University of Michigan who matched people who were looking for shared housing um, with a vetted list of people. Is that still in place? And if so, how does one access that? Um, okay, so that was the Housing <laughs> Bureau for Seniors. It is no longer in place, uh, which is why uh, we would like to see it happen again, um, but it needs to be, we need to, house it elsewhere. It needs to be a community collaboration for such a thing to happen. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have Bonnie first and then Elizabeth. Well, it's kind of like 
listening to your presentation, the 42% of the, the older adults that are looking at foreclosure issues. Um, this is kind of like near and dear to my heart. I have a home that I purchased with my husband. We've been in there for 20 years. It is way too large for us, but because I can't afford to sell my house and move to a smaller house in Washtenaw County. I've been looking for five years. And if I buy a smaller home, my tax burden is going to be larger than what my home is now because you know the Michigan law and it breaks the tax thing and your taxes go up. So well, if you've got 42% of the people that own homes right now that are facing foreclosures, what is gonna to happen to them if you increase millage? I mean, that, that's kind of the catch 22 because it's just more home burden on people that own homes. I've tried to at least get them to stabilize on my home evaluation every year when they continually increase your home and valuation in Washtenaw County. Being a senior and the last time I went to the board, they basically said, if it's too expensive, move. That's basically what I was told as a senior. So that's it's kind of, you know, you want to stay in Washtenaw County you can't find a place to buy it to stay in Washtenaw County. So it's, it's, but you want to have a millage to help support seniors. I mean, it's a horrible situation right now. If you are a homeowner and you want to stay in Washtenaw County, you are a senior and you're looking to downsize to buy a smaller affordable house. I think that's like a unicorn in Washtenaw County because everything that's being built is massive and huge and, I'm not going to go into a four to six hundred thousand dollar mortgage to be able to buy a new home that's being built right now in 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 my area. So how do you, you know, I I, I mean this is a terrible question to ask you. Um, what kind of recommendations or or something could we do to the county to fix this affordable housing dilemma that seniors are in that want to stay in their own home? but the house is too big, too many stairs, and they can't find affordable housing to buy to move into. So Bonnie, thank you. I think you just epitomized what I've been talking about. Um, a lot of seniors wanna downsize, but mm -hmm. they can't find affordable and, and stay in their community, right? Five years I've been looking, literally right. five years. Yeah, and can't afford, they just can't afford to move within Washington County. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a couple of things that I'm thinking about, right? Um, one, there's setting aside, if there were a millage, setting aside some a percentage of those funds to create an affordable housing trust fund that could be used to leverage other funding sources um, and decrease the cost for developers to build affordable housing. Um, generally, I think of affordable housing as rentals, not necessarily as homeowners, and it's just because I haven't, I, because I haven't gone down that line of thought process yet. So one, it would be the development of affordable rentals is one thing that I'm thinking about. Two, there are um, poverty tax exemptions. Those decrease and can actually um, negate, entirely negate property taxes for low income households. The income threshold and asset threshold varies from township to township. So I think there are 28 of those in Washtenaw County. So um, I can't really, I can't give you concrete numbers on that, but theoretically, if a millage were passed, property taxes were to go up, um, some of that could be counteracted by applying for and receiving property tax um, reductions. And then finally, this whole concept of aging in place and home modifications and home sharing, right? Home modifications could change homes to make them much more senior friendly, uh, eliminating thresholds, raising countertops, widening doorways. Um, there's some other, other really low cost ones that I'm not thinking of at this minute, but there's that so that people can actually remain in their homes comfortably and the idea of home share where somebody else would be there um, to, just to keep an eye out on you and to, and to help out and also to combat social isolation, 
which a lot of our older adults are facing um, right now, more so than ever before. And as for the millage, uh, the Say Yes to Seniors Coalition has come up with numbers about what, how much that would actually increase someone's um, property tax. And I can't think of those numbers right now. It's nominal, but nominal is a lot of money when you don't have enough. I'm very aware of that. Okay, Elizabeth. Thanks. Um, I have really two questions, if I might. Uh, one about the shared housing. You mentioned that um, the Housing Bureau for Seniors doesn't exist anymore, and it really needs to be a more community-based effort. Um, I know there are not too many um, shared housing programs nationwide, um, but could you talk a little bit about what a community-based um, reiteration of uh, Housing Gear for Seniors might look like in Washtenaw County? Oh, <laughs> um, so, Okay, Housing Bureau for Seniors still exists. The Home yeah. Share Program no longer Right, works. excuse great. me, I missed yeah. both. Okay, great. Okay, so it is was a casualty of COVID, okay? And I can't speak a lot about it as I just started working for the Housing Bureau in October and it stopped a year or two before I started working here, right? But ideally, I this idea has been explored also by... Um, the Washtenaw Housing Alliance. The Housing Bureau is expressing some interest in it. It would be, we're intending to gather together a group of people who, um, a group of organizations who might really be able to pull this off um, and follow the best practice guidelines that are issued by the National Shared Housing yeah. Coalition and um, just getting as much community buy-in as we can. And that's, okay. that's about all I can tell you. I haven't, again, delved too much into that yet either. So it's, it sounds like you're saying um, there's a need for a restart, kind of looking at the beginning of the thing, who's going to be involved, how do you build coalition, and how do you find funding? That's right. Yes. Um, the second question, um, you had mentioned that about 30% of older adults after being surveyed recently, said that home modification repairs were important for them to be able to, to age in place successfully. And then you listed uh, a bunch of programs that do, to some degree, provide those services. Um, I'm wondering in your judgment, is the funding that already exists for providing those services sufficient and flexible enough. Part of the reason I'm asking this is I know a couple counties with millages, uh, Monroe and Ingham County um, specifically pit as one of their targets, supplementing existing programs for home repair. Um, so a couple of things about that. No, funding isn't sufficient right now. We need more, we need more funding to um, provide those services, but we also need more staffing. It's not just funding to provide the services, we need staffing. Um, and I, I will be so bold as to say OCED needs more staffing too, to be able to expand their programs. There are so many households that really need assistance with things like having their gutters cleaned or replaced because the ice drips onto their porches and people can't get in and out of their homes without fear of slipping on the ice. Um, so many older adults need assistance with plumbing repairs, leaky faucets, toilets that don't stop running. I mean, those aren't specifically age related problems, but a lot of older adult households just don't have the finances to address those issues or to call a plumber or even know a reliable handy person. 
right? That was another thing that's recently been cited. A lot of older adults just don't know or trust the resources out there uh, for handy people. They trust the resources, the community agencies that are providing assistance to them, but they can't, they're nervous about going out into that other world of construction and home repairs. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have Marie and then after her, Stephen. Yeah, just a, a note on home sharing. Um, I was at the um, NCOA conference last year and connected with a group called Silver Nest, and they have been trying to expand more into Michigan specifically. Um, and Silver Nest uh, kind of feels like Airbnb when you're looking around, but is specifically for home sharing and older adult home sharing. Um, and then they're looking for partners such as Housing Bureau for Seniors or Washtenaw County government nonprofits. They work with healthcare companies um, and other groups like that. So that might be something for Housing Bureau for Seniors to look into. And then if you guys know anybody who's looking for housing, there are just a couple of, of options um, for renting in Washtenaw County, just a few, not, not really a lot, but just worth noting, it's called silvernest.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you know by any chance if it's a fee for service? Um, so what they do is they sort of like how your uh, previous home share program worked where you're finding somebody who has the house and an extra room, private bath, that kind of stuff, and helping them rent out that space to somebody else. They help facilitate with some of the, the meet and greets and seeing if there's a partnership, um, leases and things like that. They pretty much operate uh, like your previous program did. Great. Thanks. I'll look into that. And I just yeah. got a text from my boss, Janet, who's here. And she's like, yeah, I'm aware. Cool. <laughs> Great. Hi, Janet. <laughs> Steven? Yeah, first of all, fantastic presentation. So comprehensive. Yes. Um, really looking forward to sharing the video with others and the, and the slides because it, uh, it really tells a picture. And I hope that, you know, Peter gets it out to the commissioners and, and Jason and um, other people that are policymakers. Um, so the, uh, the question, you know, and, and I'll give Bennett, I'm gonna give you a heads up, Bennett. I, I was gonna say that since you've publicly talked about living in Larry Terrace, I was just wondering, you know, about your perspective. So be ready for that, um, you know, on that topic. But, um, you know, I guess I, one question is, do the housing for um, Seniors Bureau, do they have any role in helping people make good decisions about assisted living or nursing homes? Is that part of the scope of what you do? Yes. So uh, thanks for asking. We do. It's part of the housing counseling and it's part of the education piece that I do. Um, we have a number of tools that we use, assessments to get a general idea about where somebody's at and we give them information um, about, about, we give them information and ideas about what to look for in terms of where they're going in, in assisted living, like what type of fees to expect, things to think about, like uh, you might wanna budget an extra 20% because it's, um, the assisted living isn't going to necessarily provide you with laundry services. It could be an a la carte, a la carte service. Um, if you go out, think about you're going to add 20% to your budget because you might want to go out and eat or do other things. So we help give I people ideas about what to expect. It doesn't, assisted living isn't necessarily as inexpensive in quotation marks. They cost anywhere from like $3,000 to $12,000 a month here in Washtenaw County. Uh, you need to budget and you need to budget not just for this year, but cost of living increases every year thereafter. So yeah, we help people think that process. How, how about um, in choosing the right nursing home in a urgent way, you're in the hospital, you gotta go to a nursing home. So we provide we provide a lot of assistance or we, we talk a lot with the, there's some critical care social workers um, and we talk a lot with them and go back and forth about providing resources and where people might wanna go and thinking about funding 
long-term funding might be an issue for some people. They might want to need long-term nursing care beds, right? So uh, Medicaid's involved, Medicaid thought, thought processes are involved in that, about which we know a good deal. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, somehow you got muted. <laughs> Yeah, then I just want, I don't know if you wanted to comment as someone, you mentioned you live in Lurie Terrace many a time uh, as a user of affordable housing. Any any thoughts you have? Well, uh, I, thank you, Steve. Um, I think that um, living in a large senior community has strengths and weaknesses um, and uh, <clears throat> it's not as if social isolation is not a problem in a um, in Murray Terrace. Uh, it is. So I don't. I hope that's not a surprise uh, to you. I think for folks who've listened to me uh, during the you know last year, uh, social isolation is a considerable problem. But at this point, I don't want to go any further than that, unless you have questions. No, nothing specific. I just thought that, you know, that anything you would share, would, I'm sure we would all gain benefit from. Thank you, Bennett, for sharing. Um, are there any other um, questions or discussion on this topic before we move ahead? Uh, just as a final thing, a lot of uh, my references were in my notes and I'll create an appendix slide and get that to Stephanie so that people have um, access to my sources. Oh, good. Thank you. That would be very helpful. And again, thank you for letting me present to you all. And thank you so much for taking the time to present to us. That was a very helpful, very helpful. Indeed, indeed. Well done. So we're gonna move ahead. We're gonna let you escape unless you wish to stay and watch. You're welcome to do that. But um, our next agenda item is an innovative, innovative solutions discussion. Uh, this was brought up quite some time ago by Elizabeth Thompson. And uh, when we started scheduling out what we would talk about at future meetings, it occurred to the officers that we weren't entirely sure what she had in mind. So uh, I asked her to at least start a discussion about what she has in mind and see if that sparks any ideas for a future presentation. So Elizabeth, I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, we'll keep with the same thing though. If people have comments, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Thanks. Um, the reason I had come up with this as a topic for meeting is um, we, in our presentations, we've had a lot of discussions about what exists in Washtenaw County. And often in those discussions, just like today is a perfect example, uh, people talking about um, some innovative programs that either have been piloted and not continued, like capable, uh, which, um, Vaughn alluded to, but it's uh, a program, if I'm uh, understanding correctly, where you have a team, which includes uh, um, an occupational therapist and some, uh, as well as somebody who can, links to folks who can actually do home repairs and assessment and some training elements to help people over a several month period um, learn how to be able to live safely and independently in their community, in their home, plus being able to make the modifications necessary for that. So, and that program has ended because lack of funding, but that, that seems an innovative program ex example. We all have links in the, um, world of older adult services and also personal experiences. So I was thinking it would be helpful to begin to have a discussion, which again might lead us to future topics about things that we happen to know about or have heard about or want to know more about 
that are innovative, that aren't just doing what we're doing. I know Stephen, for example, shared something about uh, a program for medical transportation that's linked with Huron Valley Ambulance, if I'm remembering correctly, as a in potential innovation. So that is what I'm hoping we can um, begin to share. Does that make sense to folks? It, it, you know, I just say it does to me. I think we need to learn of, of models that have worked in the real world in places nearby and places far away. And I think that's, that's not only how we learn, but how we can support those types of programs. And when someone has already done it, it's so much more easy to replicate than starting from scratch. So there's a lot more credibility when someone has taken it with whatever funding they had and operationalized it. So yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. So Marta, I don't know where you want to go forward from. Well, I'm thinking about how to structure this and I'm thinking that I, I'm putting this out for to see what you think about it. Would it be a good idea for any every member of the Commission on Aging who knows of something like that to send you a nomination? Like, here's something I know about. Um, and maybe we could put together a collaborative slideshow of innovative solutions. Uh, how do you feel about that idea? I think that would be a good way to start. Um, I can also share to get people's thinking going. The State Advisory Council on Aging did some uh, reports in the past for some innovative practices that AAAs around the state have been doing. And I thought I might share that with folks who might, uh, as a beginning to start your thinking going and maybe one of those programs you look at, you go, yeah, that is something we need to investigate in Washington County, or it might go, they don't mention it, but what I'd really like to see in Washington County is dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. So maybe that would be part of the discussion that we would have on, I think sure. scheduled for August 5th, but if we could put together a composite of what you've got there and what everyone's proposals and then we could sort of collaboratively work through that on August 5th and see where we might want to go after that. That sounds good. Um, I saw Bennett had his hand up a minute ago. Okay, well, uh, Marta, in your uh, sort of outline, the second item, uh, quote, getting the word out, close quote, and then quote, we need to empower aging adults to um, empower them to advocate for their needs, close quote. Uh, that sounds like um, something I've said um, more than once. Um, my objective for the forthcoming year is facilitating the growth of advocacy on the part of senior groups. Now, I don't think this is a solution, but I guess the idea is uh, cultural in nature. Um, I think that uh, one thing that would help would indeed wind up promoting legitimacy and credibility on, on part of the public. So what do I have in mind? For those of you who are 60 and over and, and who wish to self-acknowledge. Okay, Bennett, you're gonna to have to stop right there. We are not going to talk about the age of people on this commission, period. Okay. Marta, you apparently have not spoken to Peter Lindemann. I will not tell him what changed the, uh, if you will, the uh, approach, but he did say, that demographic composition of groups is legitimate. 
is legitimate. Now, is Peter this is, in this attendance? Is off, this is off the topic that we're on on the agenda at this moment. And so we are not going to go down this avenue right now. You may feel free to have an email discussion with Peter and myself about this after the meeting. So right now, the topic we're on is discussing innovative solutions. Um, I see that Bonnie has her hand up, and I'll call on you. Elizabeth, I think this is excellent. I, I love brainstorming. I love working together because you don't know what you don't know until you, until you know. So um, I, what I'd like to do is if there's any of our participants also out there, the commissions, that have been exploring innovative ideas, <clears throat> uh, any, any other innovative programs out there to please send you the information um, if they know of any other presentations or um, um, conferences that they've gone to. And there are some good presentations out there to send them to you um, because you, like you said, there might be some place that's you know, in New England or California or, you know, South Dakota that has been working on a very innovative program for older adults. Um, welcome all of those ideas. And I haven't been to a conference in a while. So those that have been going to conference have something great out there. And um, even just to get a snippet of different slide presentations from different conferences, and then might get our conversation going. And then we can maybe narrow it down to maybe a couple of topics that really interest all of us, and then we can do some more deep dives. So I, I think this is very exciting. I, I like the brainstorming and I like the innovativeness. So, so I'm inviting anybody that's out there listening, that's been to a conference or whatever, send that information to Elizabeth so we can you know, start there. So thank you for doing this, Elizabeth, it's great. And I see Elizabeth, you're next. I think that's a great way of thinking of it as a mini conference. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt that if I attend a conference, if I come home back with one good idea, it's been a successful conference. Yeah. So I think we'll come up with a lot of good ideas. I'm wondering, I love the idea if the fellow commissioners think it's good to ask the, um, our colleagues who um, listen in, in the conference to also submit material. And I see a lot of heads nodding. So it sounds like people are agreed with that. I was wondering, Stephanie, what do you think um, the best way of getting the information so that it can be shared with me and any of the commissioners who wanna help me with it, uh, kind of put together um, our discussion framework? Um, so like the best way to compile all of the programs, both from you as members and then also from the community. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm happy to gather them if people want to send them to me and I can disperse them to whoever wants to work on it. Um, I'm thinking, uh, maybe when we send out the information to the listers, we could include in there some information about, um, so that way, even people that don't attend this meeting. Um, can see that they can send some uh, ideas they have of programs to me. We, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, I think we need to have it sent to Elizabeth because I think this might be outside the role that you're contracted to do, Stephanie, in terms of collecting information. I don't want to get in trouble with the contract issue. Um, so if you want to help with putting things together, that would be cool. But I think maybe they need to, ideas need to be sent to Elizabeth. If that would work out for you, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking um, the best way. Um, and I'm not seeing on here comment, the ability to comment uh, on my app. So I do not know, Stephanie, if you have the ability to post my email address? No, we don't have some, just the structure of what, of, since it's a webinar, Zoom, I don't have the ability to comment either. Um, Stephanie, would you, you uh, would you resend to the entire Commission on Aging um, the email addresses of each of us so that we can be in touch that way? And then 
Is that posted? Isn't that posted publicly on our website? Our emails are not publicly posted on the website, but there uh -huh. is a submission portal on the website so people can submit something that go. way. Mm -hmm. okay. And those I think, I think those things go to me and then I'll send them to you, Elizabeth. Um, okay, so just to summarize, um, and I'll check with you later, Stephanie, because I have a couple email addresses floating around and I want to make sure I have the right one that I use for aging stuff to send to the commissioners for all of you folks listening and maybe you can indicate it in the listserv uh, email you can send if we use the portal and maybe even put the um, that's a way to add comments that's a way to submit uh, your ideas uh, about innovative programs you'd like to see discussed. Yeah, sounds great. That will work. I see Dana has her hand up and then after that, Bonnie. I just wanted to request that if you are going to send out emails, um, if you could include me on that, because um, I don't know that I automatically get your emails if it's sent to like the com a commission's email group. But I would like to have your emails. That's the short of it. OK, that seems fair. Bonnie? Yeah, I just want to clarify for the minutes, to make sure that I'm understanding what we're what we're agreeing on here. We did ask to have our personal emails taken off the website, so I don't want to have our personal emails put back on the website. I do think that it is good that we direct people to go. Is it to the portal to submit information? Then that will go to Marta, and then she can Martha, and then she can get everything sent out to Elizabeth or the group or whoever is working on it. So that's going to be the process. We're going to direct them towards the portal, Stephanie, and send out a blast to everybody that's on the listserv that we're looking for any kind of innovative programs or presentations, conferences that they've been to, to kind of like, and then give them the link to the portal. Is that what we're going to do? Okay. I just wanted to clarify that to make sure that that's the process we'd, we'd agreed on. That's all. And I will say, Elizabeth, that I'd be happy to help you if there's anything I can do to be helpful. Uh, Stephen, you are next. Yeah, um, you know, I just want to go back to the first part of what Ben was talking about, because I think we got lost in the second part of his comments, which was, I think I heard from him that there is some innovative ways to um, engage older adults so that they're part of the process. And I think that despite best intentions, um, it, you know, the, the people who are attending these meetings, for example, are, I, I think the majority are from community-based organizations as opposed to individual older adults representing purely themselves. And so I think we have opportunities to do even better than we have in reaching directly to all the people, whether it's about ARPA or Millage, whatever our next thing is, um, and just educating the public and learning from the public. So um, I guess that's, that's I, I just wanna bring back Bennett's topic. I think it's a really important one that if we can find a approach that has worked in other communities as a way of really engaging older adults so they're part of the process. I think that would be a huge innovation for us and for the Commission on Aging for now and for future years. So um, I just wanted to echo Bennett's comment and, and hopefully we can find a, a community like that. Thank you, Stephen. In America, in, in America or outside of America? Yes, certainly we shouldn't overlook our colleagues in other countries. Um, Elizabeth and then Bonnie. Stephen, I would like to challenge you then as uh, one of the innovative programs you might uh, consider uh, submitting for discussion is uh, ways in which um, uh, we can engage the entire community of Washtenaw County in discussion of uh, how to make uh, our county as um, wonderful places it can be for pe older adults. Um, and that definitely is figuring out ways of input. One of the things that 
I know some other counties who have an official uh, office on aging within the county is they do things like have public hearings and solicit public comment and so on. But that is where my head jumps to. Um, but you may have other ideas too. I, I think that that is indeed an important innovation to discuss. I will absolutely accept that challenge and I'll, <laughs> I'll, work, with, I'll work with Bennett on that too. Great, thank you. Um, Bonnie? I just wanna, um, I just wanna echo with what Elizabeth said. I was gonna throw the gauntlet down to Stephen too and throw the challenge out there. I'm glad he picked it up, Stephen. Um, communication is everything. It doesn't matter what we do. If nobody knows what we're doing, it, it, we can't be as beneficial as, as we can be. So yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited to see if you can find how other communities have tackled this, this age old problem of getting the word out. And um, again, if anyone out there that's, that's in our community base has, has attended a conference where they have challenged that, you know, to tackle this challenge, I'd be very interested to see it. And Elizabeth, I'll help as well. You know, whether it's for viewing or looking at slides or input Thank or whatever. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Help, help in that way as well. Okay, excellent. Uh, Stephen, do you mean to still have your hand up or is that an inadvertent raise? No. Hearing no response, I think that's probably an accidental hand raise. Um, anything else on innovative solutions before we move ahead? Sure. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the potential new subcommittee on fund mapping. In the officers meeting, we thought it might be a good idea to talk more about what people are thinking about before we make this decision. So um, I can't remember. I think we used to lead off on this, if I'm not mistaken, or did I do I remember this wrong? No, um, I don't really have uh, a lot of, of thoughts on this. I thought it was interesting when Jason was sharing about the um, new plan with the to approach the millage to involve county administration. Um, someone had the question if fund mapping could potentially be part of what the work, I think Elizabeth, that was you, um, if that could be some of the work that that they do as, as they make the plan and the case and all of that. And I think if that's the direction they start to go, that would be really the best way to, to approach this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually had a similar thought that, you know, hey, if they're gonna do it, then maybe we don't have to. So, um, you know, maybe that's something to think about. Elizabeth and then Bonnie. Um, absolutely, they have the expertise. <laughs> to know what, what is being spent in the county and the ability to, I'm sure, um, know uh, much more, uh, much faster than, than we can develop that skill set. I'm wondering if, because we've had some discussion that that's important to know, <laughs> if it might be appropriate for us to recommend to the County Board of Commissioners that as they consider um, looking at how a millage might be implemented, that they include this fund mapping as part of their um, consideration. Um, I don't wanna make a motion yet because I wanna hear what other folks think about that. Uh, I see Bonnie is next. I, I'm i right down the same line of all of you. I, so I wrote that note down for this part of the discussion when Jason said that, because they have the funding, they have the staff, they have the ability to know what's going on with, with the county and what money's coming in. So I'm thinking that it is would be really important for us to make sure that we're, we are on their advisory board or the little subcommittee or whatever the county is going to do to look at this process of the, you know, the, the planning for what, how a millage would be used that we get a member on there. I think if we do, then that person can work on them with this 
mapping of funding, the potential ways that they want to use it. So I think if we can really somehow make sure that we are a part of that process, it will help solve this funding mapping as well as potential use of funds for uh, supporting older adults in Washtenaw County. So I was very happy to hear him say because fund mapping has got to be part of the millage process for the millage recommendation. They've got to know what's already out there and then how the millage is going to supplement it. So I think that fits really good for what we've been talking about doing. So as far as the motion, Elizabeth, my thought would be maybe a letter to the commissioners that we are extremely interested in this. We really want to participate in it and that we'll, you know, someone from our commission will, you know, serve or help or, or, or whatever to be part of that process. That's kind of just where I was thinking. I wonder if we want to do a motion or if we just want to convey the general information to Jason and ask him to sort of take it forward. I think he would take it forward for us very well. He's been a good advocate for us. And um, does Peter have a suggestion? Yeah, that's a good idea, Margaret. So uh, a couple of things. Uh, the main thing is, um, while I think all of this is great and good, uh, technically uh, what Jason talked about has not been considered by the Board of Commissioners yet. Uh, so it might be helpful to wait until Wednesday and at your next meeting, see what that actual instruction ends up being, see what the wording is of the instruction to county administration. Um, and just for y'all to know, the board uh, is, technically, oh, is technically supposed to go through county administration. So when, when they instruct county administration to do something, it's usually county administration, work with everyone in the organization who might be relevant for this work. Um, so depending on what that final wording is, I think asking, um, uh, asking Jason to either pass it on or doing some outreach to the admin team, uh, and just offering your assistance directly to admin can also work since once they're instructed to do it, it's the ball's kind of in their court. So it might be worth, uh, connecting with that admin team, uh, to talk about how, how y'all can be involved. Cool. Elizabeth, you have your hand up. I'm wondering if before the next meeting uh, or the officers or whomever might ask Jason, um, what he feels would be most helpful given that we want to accomplish, as Bonnie said, to have a seat at the table, to be there and to emphasize the importance of fund mapping and Jason might be able to give his perspective on what after Wednesday he might find helpful in the discussions. Well, I can I just say one thing here? I'm I okay. Don't... And then Bennett has his hand up after you. Okay. All right. And then Stephen. Okay. So Margaret, go ahead. Oh. Um, the one thing I think is important is that, um, of course, we need them to act on that, that issue on Wednesday, but I think it's important to, for them to hear from us in writing and so that they know we're watching this and, um, and, and that we support it and, um, and we want them to consider the fund mapping. So I, I just think putting it in writing at the appropriate time, um, I think it's just a better idea. I think it's a reasonable idea to ask who would be willing to make a draft of a proposed resolution to send to them so that we could all have a look at it at the next meeting based on whatever happens on Wednesday. Is there anyone who wants to draft? If not, the officers will try to draft something. Okay, I see Bennett's hand and then Steve. Well, okay, I don't want to break the continuity of the thought. So when you folks are, you know, finished, I will. Should I just go ahead? I, I have no idea what you're talking okay, about. Okay, well, it's uh, distinct from... One of the things I've done at Lurie Terrace is I've given a presentation or two about the work that we are doing in the commission and trying to do. 
I recommend that each of you do the same in uh, one of the aged community homes or centers. And that is maximize visibility and uh, introduce yourself. And uh, perfectly, if you um, natural situation, um, thank you. That's a really good idea. And I think maybe, you know, each one of us should in some way figure out how we can personally do that. And I don't know, Marie, if you see this in the communications committee, subcommittee realm, um, but that's something that we definitely should put on the list to discuss. And thank you for suggesting that. Stephen? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yes, sorry, I know it's, hold on, let me make it a little better. Uh, no, no. Sorry. Um, so I just wanted to say the one thing that a couple things. First of all, I agree with what Margie said, and in regards to quickly about Bennett, what he just said. I'm wondering whether the idea of us putting kind of some slides together that could be used in those kinds of talks, so that we're, you know, as professional as we could be. That's a really good idea. You just faded out, Stephen. I don't know if you were finished speaking or what happened. Maybe he went in a tunnel. I think he's probably in a not internet compatible, entirely internet compatible location. Um, okay. Um, so I think that's a good suggestion also. Um, some sort of standard template of slides of what's the Commission on Aging and what are we doing kind of thing. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh good. Sorry about that. Um, you wouldn't want to know where I was, but, but anyway. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. But um, the other thing that Margie brought up earlier that is very um, concerning is the fact that there's not a reason for an election in 23. And I guess that, although Jason mentioned, yeah, you could have, and Margie asked about the fact that, you know, it could be funded by the government, whatever, to just have an election purely for the millage. I will mention that topic really should have made me nervous that we're really talking about 2024. And, and so I guess that's the, that's the one thing I don't know, Peter, if you could comment on that, but it made me really nervous that, you know, all these people that are experiencing real need, and now we're going to 2024 potentially to support them in, you know, and most of us probably won't even be on the commission at that time, but in the long run, I don't care about us as commissioners as much as I care about the people we're trying to help. So Peter, can you, can you um, share any insights on that? Uh Yes, so I can say that without a doubt, the, the way the resolution, uh, that'll be public later today when the Board of Commissioners packet gets uh, officially published out to the public, and that means all of the details will be mostly complete, barring any amendments. Um, it does say, uh, it does include that 2023 line uh, for consideration, and it is not at all unprecedented for the county to do, uh, or any municipality to do uh, millage based questions um, in years where that's that would be the only thing on the ballot. The county has done it before, so it wouldn't be like, oh, we have to put the cost because uh, we're not doing it. It's something we actually have done, and even relatively recently, uh, it's, it's not uncommon for, for millages to go in off years. Um, so I don't think that. Uh, the suggestion of it means 2024 because the instruction is to consider for 2023. Great, thank you very much. Very um, comforting. Okay, Dina, you see, I see your hand. Was that me? I didn't hear you said me. Dina, did you did you have your hand up? Yeah. Yes, I wasn't sure if you called on me. Um, just a clarification, um, Peter. Maybe this is for you. So. If the millage passes in 2023, let's just say, for example, what is actually the earliest that money comes into the county, like when that money is actually collected from the taxes? 
So it is very dependent on which election in 2023, because there are traditionally potential elections in May, August, and November. Um, I do not have all of those timelines right now. Uh, I know it, it typically takes an extra year for the money to start uh, coming into the uh, county. So uh, it does, like there, there will be a delay no matter when it is passed, whether it's passed today, next year, it's usually an extra year delay. Uh, so, I don't have the exact timelines for millage collection though. But I think everybody should know just like just broadly. So if, if it's in 2023 at best, it's um, not collected, you know, and distributed until 2024, more likely early 2025, because you have to, you know, base it on when is actually the, the next tax collection, whether it's summer or winter. So realistically, you know, we were looking at <clears throat> at least three years before any money would go to those supporting those seniors needs. Although I think it should be noted that the community fund, the county fund mapping that will go into preparing the proposal should identify places where there may be opportunities for the county to begin funding some things before we even get to the millage point. And I'm really hoping that that's the case, that the county will then commit to saying, okay, we see this particular need here, and we see that this is within the range of possibilities for funding with county existing county funds. So I think we shouldn't overlook the possibility that some of those solutions will come earlier, or at least hopefully. Okay, so I think we've um, pretty much finished up on the discussion about fund mapping and other assorted things. So we'll move ahead. Um, the only thing I have on report to the chair is that I think you all got a copy of the memo I sent to the Board of Commissioners trying to do a more thorough job of answering the questions that I was asked when I did the presentation uh, to them. And so that was just sent out to all of you for your information. That's the only thing I have. I'm not aware of any new business um, on the agenda. Our next meeting date is July 15th um, at 8.30 and we will be getting a presentation at that time for the Say Yes to Seniors group. Um, and so I think um, if there's any questions for that, those questions would go to, I've lost track of who that is. Is that a you, Elizabeth? Uh, yes, and I've already, as I said, submitted uh, the questions uh, that I shared with you earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a question for me I couldn't answer, uh, Marta. Uh, what time on the 15th should they be prepared to give their presentation? That's really hard to say because it depends entirely on the things above them on the agenda. They'll be in the same position the Housing Bureau for Seniors was today and they started roughly at nine o'clock but I can't say for sure that's exactly when. Um, so they should, they should be prepared if they can to hop on at 8.30 mm -hmm. and wait to be called on. If they can, mm -hmm. or if they can put up with that, yes, I think that would be best. Transportation okay. also didn't start until about nine, or just a few minutes after. <laughs> so they might be, be comfortable waiting till say eight forty-five. <laughs> okay, but I wouldn't wait much longer than that because you never know with with an agenda like this. It's kind of mushy. And Stephanie. Um, they have the potential of having you share the, the screen or in terms of the presentation, um, what yeah, do you what, suggest? Yeah, whatever they're comfortable with. So I am happy to share the presentation if they um, want me to. Um, I think it's uh, probably best if they send me the presentation just in case that we have tech issues. Um, if they would like to present, I can make them co-host and they can present. It's really um, up to them. Okay, I'll let them know that. Thank you, Stephanie. No problem. Okay, and then I see Stephen, your hand is up. Yeah, you know, um, just one, um, I guess this is part of a chairman's report. I just wanted to comment, um, if you remember things ago, the leadership, this, the leadership decided to cancel the meeting because there wasn't a speaker. I, I, 
something that I guess I, I, I was concerned because of all the things we want. Stephen, you are breaking up to the point that we cannot hear you at all. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. Um, I see that Stephen is logged in twice on my screen. Canceling one of those logins might help. Yeah, I'm not in. Yeah, I'm now. I'm nowhere near the first place I'm logged in. But can you hear me? It's At this moment, we can hear you. Who knows how long that will last? You muted yourself again, Stephen. Okay, so my comment was really is in the future, um, rather than the leadership canceling the meeting, that we have the meeting. And then if the meeting winds up short because there's no topics at hand that anyone wants to speak about, that we do that. But that it felt, um, I don't know, it felt less, I felt less empowered by the fact that the three people in leadership made a decision to cancel a meeting without engaging the rest of the group. So I was just wondering whether we could make that a, a standard that in the future, if something like that happens, that we do continue to have the meeting and it could be a five minute meeting, could be a half hour meeting, but that we actually continue on as expected. I think that's a reasonable thought. Um, and I'm sorry you felt unempowered. I don't think that was the intention of the leadership. I know that, I know that. I'm not saying you did, you, that you did it for that reason. I'm just saying that's how I experienced it. However, and, and this is only my perspective, but if I know a meeting is gonna be five minutes, I see no point in putting it on my calendar and um, so I'm really not sure how to resolve this, but I, I will take that under advisement and discuss it as officers and yeah. And, and by the way, I just said five minutes. I can't imagine this group ever only yeah, well, having a meeting for five minutes. <laughs> Good point that um, Elizabeth. I um, actually have an opposing viewpoint. Uh, Marta, I'm very glad that the officers made the decision to cancel the meeting. Um, because it may, meeting for only five minutes isn't for me five minutes. It ends up prep time before, prep time after. And while it, we are all such interesting people that we can have fascinating discussions that probably would last for a long time. If we do not have specific agenda items to discuss, um, I'm not sure we're moving the work of the uh, commission forward. And also as Peter has congratulated us in the past, we, we meet frequently and fully. And I think sometimes uh, taking a break is not a bad thing on the model of the county board of commissioners sometimes cancels meetings. Okay, so it sounds like this discussion will be continued. Um, anything else before I call for adjournment? Okay, um, I don't think we need to take a roll call on adjournment. So all those in favor of adjourning, wave your hand, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Looks like we're have an adjournment and thank you everybody for participating and you just got one extra minute in your day. <laughs> Thanks. Happy 4th, everybody. Happy 4th.